pixel is a point of light. If I take many points of light and put them next to each other, I get an image. The image is made of all these juxtaposed pixels. But a pixel is an isolated color, has no relationship to its neighbors, right? And it's self-sufficient. It's alone. But is that the only way to describe something? This image can actually be created a different way, from patterns. And these patterns are relational. They're not isolated, they're not alone, they're not independent. They affect each other. And this pattern here can be combined with this pattern, and this pattern, and more patterns. Thousands of patterns to create an image. Looks like chaos, but then you see the image appearing. It's so beautiful. The same image that we had before a minute ago, but out of patterns, not individual isolated pixels. So I think we can recognize that we look at the world sometimes as isolated pixels. We see ourselves as isolated. And there's another way to look at things. That's what guides my interest in research into this pattern-based Fourier transform approach to images and, and science. So, you can see this all in order, in real time. It's just so beautiful to watch the patterns emerge into an image. If you compare the two side by side, you can see that it's the same amount of data. If you have 60,000 pixels, you need 60,000 patterns. Same result, different process. Equivalent data, different way of looking at the world. Isolated versus relational. So how does this work? Well, you can start with a pattern like this. You can represent it in what's called the frequency domain, like this, just two dots. And then this, this pattern here, for instance, would be represented by these two dots. And you're just placing dots on the screen in the frequency domain to match the pattern. It's an equivalent method, just different. So in the end, you get a bunch of dots on the screen. And these are, you, know, you can't recognize what this is, right? It just looks like a bunch of dots. It's code for this. And it's amazing that we can get something as complex as this, as detailed as this, just from a bunch of dots on the screen. But it's because they're all related to each other. Now, we can do, do fantastic things with this. We can edit this in new and different ways, rather than take an eraser and erase a single building from a part of the screen. We can erase part of the frequency domain and filter out the, the edges. We can blur the edges all at once. So you're holistically toning down the contrast. You're not looking at each individual pixel. You can do it more, you get more blur more blur. You can do it the other way, too. You can take out the middle, highlight the edges. I found all the edges all at once without having to look and detail every single building. And if you wanted to remove a building from this picture, you couldn't do it with this process. Why? Because every building is related to other, every other building. And similarly, I wonder if we try and remove some person from our life, or some habit, some quality of ourself that we don't like. It has impacts everywhere. We are relational. There's aspects of each part of us everywhere. So this can actually be used in technology. This is a hologram. And it's, I, I got really interested in holograms as a, as a college student here, actually, many years ago, and at UC Berkeley. And we built one. And you shine a laser on the city image of the object, and it bounces to a piece of film. And then you shine a reference beam to the mirror, and it bounces off to the film. And they interact. They come together. And they form a pattern, like waves on the ocean, that you can't recognize. 
But when you shine a laser light on it again, you get a piece of film that has these markings, and you shine the laser light, you get an image of the city, as if it was really there. Now, it's an illusion. You can see the piece of film that's sitting there is what you're really looking at. But the image of the city seems to move across space, three-dimensionally. That's possible because the film captures the relationships, not just the individual characteristics of, e characteristics of each pixel, the relationships between all the points in, in the scene. So here's what you think you're looking at, a piece of film. The, the triangle is a dot marking the center of the physical film in, in actual, the actual world. And you can see the buildings that appear to be behind it in reference. And if I move to a different angle, the triangle stays in the center. What you're actually looking at is a triangle on the film, but the buildings appear to move. So what you think you're looking at, what you're actually looking at, may not be the same thing. That's what I love about this, this way of looking at things, instead of assuming everything is exactly as it is written, as with pixels. Everything is in, in, as it is in relationship to something else, the rest of the scene, with patterns. So, if we start from pixels, we're asking an implicit question. How do we get something from nothing? How do I start with a blank canvas and put points on the screen, pieces of paint, to create something from my own head? But if we start from the whole pattern, we're asking a different question. How do we get something from everything? How do we create from the relationships across the, the field? And a rainbow is a great example of this. A rainbow is white light coming from behind you, from the sun, bouncing off the clouds and hitting your eyes. And in doing so, it spreads out. It refracts into red, blue, yellow, green. And those colors are really the removal of the other colors from the white. So you start with the whole pattern of white light. You remove red and green to reveal the blue. And in the same way, maybe we, we, we don't add stuff to our lives to, to become better people. We, re we remove limitations, remove concepts that don't actually serve us to reveal the beauty inside of ourselves. A rainbow is beautiful because of what is not there. So our perspective can change with new information. As we saw, the image of the city change from blur to, to sharp with new layers of pattern. And I had this experience uh, this year that illustrated this to me personally. About 20 years ago, I was a high school teacher. And I did it for a number of years, and it's a very hard job. Some of you know. And uh, I didn't feel like I was super good at it, didn't love it. And I left teaching, and I went and did a bunch of other things. And just last year, we got an invitation, my family, to go see the movie Oppenheimer. Remember when that movie came out? I was super excited because it's a bunch of physicists. Niels Bohr and uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer, Frank Oppenheimer, uh, Richard Feynman. And Frank Oppenheimer was one of my heroes. And in seeing the movie and seeing, it was a private family viewing, so we met some of the family of Frank. And I started realizing I think a lot like him. And I really admire his way of interacting with people, selfless and simple. And the joy of seeing other people understand something for the first time. And I started seeing myself again as a teacher. My identity was shifting to see that in myself. And not even a month later, an opportunity came up for me to take a job as a physics teacher at high school. It was amazing. This whole thing was like a dream come true, the, seeing the movie and then getting the job. And so I re recontextualized the past experience from like a failure to being the start of a long journey. And I'll tell you, 
Uh, I've developed tremors in the past year, and my students, I realize, accept me more than I ever have. It's been a real blessing. So, I've learned a lot from, from that gift. And I want to, to consider this sentence to illustrate what I mean about patterns. The old train left the station. You're probably picturing an old, like an ancient, run-down locomotive pulling out of a depot. But what if I change the sentence? The old train, the young. Old becomes an elder. The elders educate the youth. Train goes from being a locomotive to the, the act of education. The meaning of the first part of the sentence completely changes with the addition of additional information. Because as a whole, the sentence has a pattern embedded in it. Siri does this too, did you know that? <laughs> if you've ever talked to your phone and seen it write something, and you're like, yeah, that's what I meant. And then it changes it. Like, no, that's not what I meant. Keep it the way it was. Because it's, it's reading what you said at the end and saying, oh, I think he might have said this, actually. There's context. So the end of the sentence changes the meaning of the beginning. So the next time you go to use Siri, remember the image of the city. You add layers to, of patterns and you change the blurriness of the resolution. The next time you do that, remember the sentence about the train that changes meaning from a locomotive to education. And think this, as you make choices in your life, the meaning of every story that you carry can change as you take risks and try new things. Thank you.